they're really basically talking about redeploying. Um, and while there might be a, a size change in um, either the board or what you end up with in terms of a new management team, um, you're not needing to suddenly double the membership base from which you are growing. So let me quickly do the overview, and then we're actually going to hear from some of you who believe me and are trying it. <laughs> um, so we're going to quickly understand the structure and explore how it works for new leagues. And this is basically our great big um, you know, 30,000 foot vision um, that, that covers all of the roadmap work, all of the transformation work, because basically what we're really trying to do is to redesign and re-engineer the junior league to bring it more in line with where we are today as an organization and where our members are in terms of what they're looking for. So basically, the governance piece of the puzzle, um, the goal is to really create a governance structure that allows the board to be much more future focused and much more strategic and creates a management system that ensures more efficient and effective operations. And then obviously there's a whole set of policies and procedures that underscore that. The separation, we, we, we started out calling this the split and then the leaves said we don't like that word, so now we're calling it the separation, they don't like that word. Um, some things have said, well, what we've done is we've evolved. If that word works for you, that's terrific. Um, I basically have gone back to the drawing boards and simply talk about governance and management restructuring, and you can take it from there. But the key point is that when we talk about pulling them apart, we're not talking about disconnecting them. And really the point is to understand that governance and management, or the board and the management team, are interconnected and they have a highly accountable and synergistic relationship with one another. And I can never say the word right for what this picture is, but it's that Moeba strip that doesn't have a beginning, a middle, and an end, but it's constantly intertwined. And that's really the image that I want you to keep in your minds. So let's first of all talk about what is governance. And this is an actual definition of governance. I actually believe that it is, it is from the United Kingdom. Uh, but basically governance is about the whole organization that is directed and controlled and held accountable to its core purpose over the long term. That is the job of governance. And in the case of the Junior League, the whole organization or all of your members, even though we are very active-centric in terms of how we operate on a daily basis, you govern on behalf of the entire membership of your league. Um, the organization is directed, i.e. that is the planning role of the board to set the long-term strategic direction. The organization is also controlled by the board. That's the fiduciary or oversight responsibility of a board to make sure that the organization is operating in a safe, sound, and prudent manner. That the organization is held accountable both to internal and external publics um, that basically speaks to is the organization performing, and that's that fiduciary piece again. But in the last 10 or 15 years, which to some degree is why we've been paying so much attention to governance, there has been a significant increase in all of your communities with donors, the public, government, other nonprofits, all really saying it isn't enough to simply be a good organization that does good things. We really have to up the ante on accountability for impact. And that really that is what feeds back in terms of needing to redefine governance. Your core purpose is the Junior League mission which we have restated to simply to simplify and clarify it as a network of women empowered as leaders creating community change over the long term. And this really becomes one of the final responsibilities of governance, which is to ensure the sustainability of the organization. That is a job or a role of governance that most junior leagues do not have time to do because you are so caught up in the day to day. So this is the definition of governance. If that's governance, then what is management? Management is the is the, the function or the role to accomplish the goals and objectives as determined by the board through the strategic plan um, to set an annual plan that identifies how the league is going to move forward. And this is a little bit different. Uh, for those of you, some of this is a repeat from whenever we were together last. Um, for those of you that are council system leagues, that annual planning process typically stays at the board level. But under this new governance structure, it moves to the management team because it is management. An annual plan is very much a management tool. And that it is management's responsibility to ensure that the organization is efficient, effective, and risk aware. So, models for the governing board. Um, size, uh, the number of board members is not, uh, the goal is to have the board be as small as possible. Um, and this, quite frankly, is without regard for size. 
Um, and that really has to do with the fact that a smaller body of governing, of governing members is really able to be nimble and make the kinds of strategic decisions. You don't want to get too small because you want enough diversity of perspective at the table. Typically, legally, in most states in the United States, and I think this is, I think I've actually read some Canadian law that speaks to the same thing. Typically, the rule is that a board must have at least three members, and then the upper number is whatever the organization chooses to set for itself. There is no uh, mandated or statutory maximum number. So you can go down and go to 50. I mean, way back in the day, I remember uh, going to a workshop uh, with somebody from the American Cancer Society, and their national governing board was 600 people. That's a bright thought. It turned out not to be the group that actually governed because that would be a, that's an ungovernable group. But nevertheless, you can go as big as you want. Um, so for for a very small league, now I'm here. I'm talking about a league that below 30 actives, maybe below 25 actives. We would recommend that you think in terms of a blended board but where there is a single individual on that board who has designated the responsibility to oversee management. And I'll talk a little bit about what management looks like in a minute. So you might have, you might have a board of five people. You probably have to have, certainly in every state in the United States, and again, I think this is also true in Canada, you have to have a president. You have to have a secretary who is the chief um, corporate secretary of the corporation. Some states also require a treasurer and permit the treasurer and secretary position to be held by one person. I've not actually seen that done in a junior league, but I think it is probably technically possible in some states. Um, and then in addition to that, two additional board members. Um, so you'd have a president, you might have a president-elect, um, you would have a secretary, you'd have a treasurer, and then this fifth person who I would strongly argue should not be the PE, though I think there would be a temptation to do that, would become, in effect, the EVP, this term that's bouncing around that a lot of other leagues are using now to, decide, to identify the person who manages the management team. So you could, in a very tiny league, you could have a five-person board, and you could have four of those board members focus primarily on the governance of the league, and the fifth be the designated manager of management. We would then um, recommend, and I'll come to that in, in the next slide, that you also significantly downsize the your management structure. Another composition for a slightly larger small league is to simply have a small board and then also have a management team. So there are a couple of ways that you can go, again, depending, depending on your size. Term lengths, I'm a broken record on this subject and this is absolutely not size sensitive at all. We would urge you to do anything you can, whether you restructure or not, to push toward lengthening board terms. I will, however, tell you that I think until we create a more rational governing and management system, it is gonna be very hard for people to imagine that you could actually ask anybody to do the jobs they're doing now for a longer period of time. I think it's a definition of psychosis. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. Um, so, something to think about. Um, the management team, uh, in that very tiny league, that under 30 members, under 25 members, if you are still struggling to maintain a council system, our recommendation would be to disband it, to eliminate the councils, to identify a handful of committees, um, membership, community, operations, funding, maybe, and simply organize four committees to carry out the work of the league. You are not big enough to sustain a council system. The council system was really created in a council system as a management structure, not a governance structure. It was a step in the direction of what we're doing today that leagues started to do. And when I first came to AGI in the early 80s, council systems were really beginning to kick in. It was an attempt to try to take very large leagues and rationalize down their operations because they had 25 and 30 and 35 committees that were all sitting on the board and it was just overwhelming and overloading. Um, I think a very, very tiny league has reached the point where it would be better to flip out of that council structure and go back to a handful of committees that for now are going to operate the league, directly reporting to that EVP person on that five-member board. Um, alternatively, if you are a little bit bigger, you're not a teeny tiny league, um, we would strongly recommend that you downsize your councils. If you have, I mean, 
I think probably the simplest example, combined fund development and finance. Um, membership probably should stand alone. Community should probably stand alone. Communications, I would probably put either, well, I actually would probably put communications into community. Um, so now what you've done is, again, you've taken your operating system down to a size that is manageable. The key here is that you are all trying to do too much. I don't care whether you're a league of 20 actives or a league of 2,000 actives, you are trying to do too much. Part of it is we churn over so fast that we haven't had a chance to stand back and strategically ask ourselves, what's the optimum structure? What's the capacity of this organization? And in a funny sort of way, and I don't mean that in the sense of humor, um, the more you are on overload, the more you are at risk for losing members. Because there is this downward pressure on the member to continue to do more and more to keep the league running, which is not why she joined. And the more you put pressure on her to do that, the more she is likely to bail at some point. And so the more you keep trying to do, the more you run the risk that you're gonna, you're gonna bleed members because they just can't keep up and it's not why they joined the organization. So for that very small league, we would recommend eliminating the council structure altogether. And for a small, medium small league, we would recommend that you give serious thought to, to redesigning and combining councils so that you really get yourself down to three, maybe four, but I would really, I would really start with three and grow up. So um, any quick questions? The panelists are really gonna be able to tell you kind of how this lives on a on a day-to-day -day basis, but anything right off the bat that I said that has you horrified? Yes. Where would nominating fall? Nominating should always be, no matter what your structure is, nominating should be an independent direct report to the board. Um, and as you all know, we also strongly advocate that nominating and placement be separated. They are different functions. They're related, but they're different functions. Um, and nominating can be as small as three people. You do not need a nominating committee that is more than three people. Yes? Um, does the nominating director, is, are they a voting member of the board? Uh, it can be. If you're teeny tiny um, and that feels like a bit of overload, you could choose to have her not sit on the board, but I would really want her to have a direct report, not through any committee or anybody else, but let her, let her come straight into the board. But ideally, if you're a little bit larger and you're going to go above that five-member board, ideally you want to put the nominating chair on the board as a voting member of the board. Nominating is a governance function. It's critical to your, to your future. So that's, that's why we would recommend that. Anything else? Yes? I don't know if this is appropriately placed, but um, with respect to placement, we're struggling with placement right now through the membership, and we had just talked, well, maybe we need to align it with nominating. And now that's maybe counterintuitive. The best it belongs way. in membership because it's about how do you, what's the process by which the member is given her opportunity to engage in the organization around the mission. Now, I think part of the challenge for some leagues around placement is that placement has more and more become a management or operations issue and not a membership development issue. There's been more emphasis based on, we need people to do things and what's the system that we are going to use to, to cajole, persuade, threaten, I don't know, whatever you all do, um, to get people to do the work we need them to do. And that's really not what we're in the business of doing. Um, that's, that, that's actually where the new membership model comes in. Um, and not that I'm here to make a pitch for that, but I will always seize every opportunity. In many respects, that new membership model, as radical as it sounds, is in some ways more easily implemented in a very small league than it is in a very large league, because you really can just suddenly take your hands off this whole thing and say, hey, wait a minute, this is not working. But I believe placement and membership. I wouldn't necessarily, I wouldn't necessarily do the advisor ratio. I think that's a, I think that's a burden for a small league. I think there are ways to create connections to members that don't require, you know, one advisor for every ten members kind of thing. Um, but I would keep placement and membership. Yeah. So just piggybacking on that, our our placement is still with nominated, mm -hmm. um, and we do have that advisor ratio, and so. Um, like, what would you recommend? Like, bringing it, if we brought it under membership, huh? is that something that one person can do or two people can do? I that actually think that, that career pathing. Yes. And, 
because I think I mean I think you have a couple of options. First of all, what you want, that person that one person is really a coordinator. She's not the only person to decide who goes where. She's not the, certainly shouldn't be the only person to decide what's available to be chosen. But she could be the coordinator of it. And then I think all right, I'm going to make you a really tiny leap for just a moment, and I'm going to say that you have four committees. I think you look the chairs of each of those four committees. One of their primary responsibilities is to develop their people. So they, in effect, become the placement connection, and they their work can be coordinated by that coordinator person. Um, I, again, I think this is partly where our membership problems have come in over the last maybe 10 or 15 years. We've gotten so busy, we've gotten so stretched, that we are basically saying to committee chairs, get the job done. And short of killing people, I'm not altogether sure I care how you get it done, just get it done, which means that committee chairs have gotten out of the people development business. That's that's their most important role, I think. Yes, you want the work to happen, but you want the work to happen in ways that maximize member experience.